Phage display is a very important tool used by scientists in order to engineer biological systems. And what a phage is, is it's a virus that will infect only bacteria such as E. coli. And the goal of phage display is to discover peptides and proteins that uh, will allow us to determine better mechanisms for drug delivery, biosensors, and uh, new drugs in general. And to get an idea of how a phage, how this whole process works, uh, we'll start out by examining what a typical phage looks like. And a phage will be generally a long cylindrical shape, uh, and then there will be these hair-like structures on either end, and uh, these are referred to as the minor coat. And on the outside of the phage, we have something that looks a bit like a Christmas tree, referred to as the major coat. And these are key terms to remember because the minor coat in particular has genes, um, is, is the phenotype of genes in the phage's genome that we can manipulate and be able to uh, explicitly determine the link between the phenotype and the genotype. And uh, what I mean by that is if we examine the genome, and we'll say we've got some restriction endonuclease sites like this, so where a restriction enzyme would cut at a palindromic sequence, we'll say we have some genes uh, A, B, and C. There are segments within these regions that we can insert uh, genetic diversity. And genetic diversity is essentially a pseudonym for uh, directed evolution. We are essentially expediting nature's process of genetic mutations over time. And the way we could introduce genetic diversity and generate it in the first place would be from error-prone PCR, for example. And what error-prone PCR is, is if we are performing a polymerase chain reaction in the presence of magnesium and manganese, two plus ions, the DNA polymerase will have a much higher error rate when it is building the complementary strand of DNA. And this results in uh, mutations, a uh, much greater number of mutations than we typically get uh, from DNA sequencing. And so essentially we are generating a bunch of random DNA sequences and these random DNA sequences will get inserted into the phage's genome at, uh, for, for instance, uh, gene A. And within gene A, uh, on the phage itself, we will have the phenotype corresponding to the translated ticker tape codons from uh, the phage's genome expressed explicitly on the outside of the phage. And so what we'll do in labs commonly is we will have some known protein. And so I can uh, drop some kind of basic flow scheme for a protocol that we would follow in lab. Um, we would have some target protein or protein of interest. And this protein of interest would be uh, stuck to a plate and we would have a bunch of phages that um, had a genetic diversity library added to them. And uh, we would expose this protein of interest to the uh, phage library. And when we do that in solution, most of the phages with the random sequences of DNA expressed as phenotypes will have no interaction at all with the uh, protein of interest, but a few of them will. And um, so when we wash the solution gently, 
we are removing the vast majority of phages that had no uh, preferable attraction to the protein of interest. So we wash away the uh, phages without favorable attraction. And then we elute the good phages. So phages that had genes or genome sequences that uh, interacted with our protein uh, would stick around in our uh, plate, for example. And when we elute those phages, we would then sequence the good genomes. And after we have sequenced the good genomes, we would essentially have computers do this and they would analyze all of these genomes, figure out where the commonalities lie and what regions of DNA were the genes uh, similar that had a favorable attraction. And we would have then discovered a new type of protein or peptide that will interact favorably with a known protein. And to uh, give an example as to why this is so critical in the uh, pharmaceutical industry, when we're treating diseases, oftentimes people will understand with a good degree the pathway of a disease and the precursors and the biomolecules leading up to a condition. And the goal of phage display will be to discover some kind of peptide or some kind of protein that will inhibit some kind of critical step in this disease pathway that prevents that disease from manifesting itself uh, on a macro level. And so if you're able to determine what peptide sequence or what peptide uh, is effective in combating some disease, you potentially have a great idea and uh, you could form your own pharmaceutical company and go through the FDA clinical trials. So uh, this is kind of the heart of biotechnology and uh, all these pharmaceutical firms. This is where it comes from and this is how they do it. So this phage display is a very critical topic to understand, especially in biochemistry and medicine. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think it's really cool stuff. Let me know if you guys have any questions and thanks for watching.